What up, though? Ray Carberry coming at you with the meeting. After the meeting, just left out of the noon Alcoholics Anonymous meeting where we read out of the Alcoholics Anonymous book, also known as the basic text. Uh, read, shit, what did we read? We read, we read working with others working with others and, and basically this chapter is talking about when you have this newcomer that's struggling with Alcoholics Anonymous what do you do when all else has failed and this problem drinker has you know tried the therapist tried church tried counseling you know different family members then tried to talk to him and to no avail well uh, this person stopped drinking what do I do? And, and, and the solution was try another person in recovery. Try reaching out to another person that's recovering from alcoholism and get this person to come, come talk to him. And then it was a whole like list and rundown full of things that this, uh, this, this recovering alcoholic need to do to help this person that's still out there sick and suffering. Um, one of the main things that stood out to me was working with family. Uh, it really was talking about like counseling to the family as well as the person that's suffering. Uh, it talked about not preaching to them, not basically trying to demand something out of them. Because I, I know in early recovery, if somebody would have came to me preaching, if somebody would have came to me and demanding that I do this and do that, I would have rebelled instantly and been like, you know what, bumped you. You know, I, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Uh, it has to be an easier and softer way. And they came to me with some suggestions. Hey, I can relate to what you're going through. You know, I've been there, you know, this is what I did and this is what worked for me. And I ain't asking for nothing in return. You know, all I'm asking for is when you do get sober, you just help out the next person as I have helped out you. And, and that's how the message was brought to me. You know, when people help me out in early recovery, that's what they asked me to do. Hey, when you get clean and sober, you know, just return the favor and, uh, help somebody else out that's struggling like you, pay it forward. So, we also, it, you know what, it was some things that I didn't like, that I really didn't agree with. Uh, nowhere in this chapter does it mention uh, having someone go along with you when you're helping out this person that's struggling. I, and I know this is just from my experience. When I didn't try to go on a 12-step call and help somebody out that's struggling, you know, they got me high or they got me drunk before I got them sober. Uh, for instance, my daughter's mother. My daughter's mother, I remember she gave me a call and she was like, you know, can you come get me? Like, I didn't use, like, I'm out here struggling. Can you come get me? And I'm like, yeah, I got you. I'm going to come get you. And, you know, I borrowed a friend. At this time, I was in early recovery myself, and I didn't even have a vehicle. And I, and I remember I borrowed my, my housemate's car, and, you know, I, I, drove, I drove a couple of counties over to go pick her up to when I got there. She said, no, she's not leaving. She don't want to go, you know. And you know, and 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 I and I love this woman. You know, this 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 young lady. She was she was uh, pregnant with my daughter, and you know, I was I was madly in love. And I was like, you know what? If you ain't gonna come with me, then I might as well get high with you and go get us something to get high with. You know. And it was like I got high before I was able to help that person. Um, if I would have had another person with me. Uh, no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't have got high. Like, it wouldn't have went down like that. So, nowhere in this chapter does it mention that. But coming from Ray Covery, I, I would like to say, I suggest that you always bring another recovering person with you. You never do it alone. Um, also, it talked about 
you know, removing like all the pictures of alcohol, removing all paraphernalia. Uh, that's not necessary. That's what it said in this chapter. Like, that's not necessary. Uh, don't deprive your friend. Don't deprive yourself and your friends from like going out with them to bars and, and to restaurants where there's alcohol. Um, not the case with me. You know, in early recovery, like, I didn't want to be around drugs or alcohol, period. Point blank, period. I did not want to be around that stuff. So I didn't hang with people who drunk. I didn't go to places where they serve alcohol. Um, I tried to surround myself around people that was in recovery. Um, I went to meetings. I went to church. And I started hanging out with ministers and deacons and other people who were not using other people that was in recovery. That was my crowd I hung out with. Um, I remember when I like I met my wife at church and you know she was a drinker she wasn't she wasn't an alcoholic but she would have a drink from time to time and I remember us, us like when we started to get serious I remember telling like I can't hang out with you if you're drinking I don't want to talk to you on the phone I don't want no parts of you if you're drinking and she's like okay like I don't have to drink and she just stopped you know, and to this day, like, that is, like, amazing to me. Because that's the first person that I have ever met that's just stopped, you know, that stopped drinking. For me. And she did it for me. And that was so amazing. I think that's that's, that's a big part of what, what made me fall so madly and deeply in love with her. I love you, baby. <laughs> I love my wife, y'all. Um, so, yeah, she just stopped like drinking for me and I thought that was like so amazing uh and it took me a while to be able to it took me a while to be even able to go into a restaurant that served alcohol like I wouldn't even go into a restaurant that served alcohol it took me a while for that nearly long going to a, a restaurant and sit at the bar like I wasn't doing that, you know. I, I, I stopped going to strip clubs. I stopped going to the pool halls. I didn't go anywhere where they served alcohol in early recovery. Like, it took me a few years. And, I, and, and finally, I was able to go into a restaurant to serve alcohol. And I damn sure didn't sit at the bar, you know. And then I, I remember one, one day, me and my wife, we were going out. And uh, the restaurant was jam-packed. And the only seating was at the bar. And I'm like... Let's sit at the bar, and she's like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm. Be, I'll be okay." And you know, I sat at the bar, and, and we were okay. Um, a few years later, I think it was her birthday, and we we're out in the bar, and she asked, "You know, it's my birthday. You mind if I have a drink?" And you know, I was okay. So it, it took me a while to be able to be around people who was drinking, or or be in uh, restaurants where they serve alcohol. It took me a while to get to that point, but today, you know, six years in. Uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, do I get triggered from time to time? Yeah, of course. But I know how to handle it. You know, uh, I, I know to go to a meeting. I know to call somebody. I know to remove myself from the situation. So it kind of like all depends on you. My suggestion that in early recovery, you don't subject your, yourself to anyone who's drinking try to focus on your new relationships and people that's in recovery people who are not using uh people who have found a new way of life and they're willing to they're willing to support you and help you out in your own recovery uh really 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 good chapter though y'all so for those of you who have family members or loved ones that's out there struggling with drugs or alcohol uh i suggest that Either you get you a copy of the Alcoholics Anonymous books, also known as the basic text, or and read this chapter. Uh, read the chapter, Working with Others. Um, I did take it upon myself, because I know some of y'all might not know how to get access to the book or, or whatever, but, you know, the internet is a beautiful thing, and I did Google it. I Googled Alcoholics Anonymous and I, and, I, and I typed in the chapter, Working With Others, and it popped up in a PDF form. So if you just want to read that chapter alone and get a better understanding on how to help a loved one or a friend that's struggling with alcoholism, by all means, read that chapter, check it out, and maybe that can give you a few suggestions on how to approach, you know, this loved one or this family member. 
So this Ray Covery signing off with the meeting after the meeting. Peace.